day started off with a uh, nice morning run out here down by the beach. We're actually parked right up against it, which is pretty nice in this little kind of rest area along Highway 1, which is just right out there. And it was actually pretty nice last night. Got a pretty good night's sleep. It was nice and cool, which was nice because typically I don't like to have my vent fans turned on all night overnight when I'm in areas like this because it was 98% humidity and water droplets form on that and will start dripping on me. So I just left my fans off. It was perfectly good and ended up getting a good night's sleep. But I think I'm gonna get these back windows closed here real quick because there's people right outside. But the cool thing about the spot that we are currently camped out at is you step outside, you got the beach over there the parking lot that we're currently camped in. And in this parking lot where we're parked is actually a Taco Bell cantina that serves alcohol. So we're definitely gonna be checking that out later today. If you watched my last video, you'll know that I recently fixed my hot water heater. So now I have hot water in the van, which means that I can finally use my indoor shower to take a shower after I go for a run. So in honor of getting that fixed, I think I'm gonna take my first nice hot shower in the back of the van in probably five or six months. But before we can do that, I have to turn my hot water heater on and let it heat up five gallons of hot water for 15 to 20 minutes. And while we wait for that, I'm gonna start getting my shower set up. So first things first, pull this mat out here and then you just undo this latch, pull out this drawer and it reveals my hidden shower and also a piece of my broken cutting board. Basically, you just pull up this shower curtain that I have built myself out of PVC pipe and shark bite fittings. And I built it so that it fits into the pullout drawer, but when you open it up, it slides within these PVC pipes to open up and give you a little bit more space standing in there. So the way that I set this up is I have these little hooks attached to each corner that I can then hook into the corresponding hook points on the ceiling. And there's four of them. So there's one, two, and then three, and the shower curtain is a little dirty from sitting in there for so long. And then four. And that is what the shower looks like all set up. Well, and then to set up the actual shower head, which I have right here, I bought this little plastic nipple, screwed it into the back of the shower attachment. And then I can take my sink head, pull it down, unscrew that piece, and then screw in my shower head, just kind of like that. And then take this, drape it over the top there, and then I can hop in and take my shower. Got myself a towel, shampoo, and body wash. We're ready to go. All right, I think the water should be heated up enough. Go ahead and turn that off. Give the water a little test, make sure it's warm. Beautiful, nice and hot. And there we go, now we're ready to shower. And although this isn't the most comfortable shower, definitely gets the job done. There we go. So now that we're all clean, I'm gonna get myself dried off and changed. All right, definitely feels good to do that again. It is quite the process to get that set up and actually get a shower in. So it is not the most practical for everyday use for situations like this when I don't really feel like driving anywhere or I go for a run it's nice to have the option to be able to set that up and take a nice hot shower and get myself feeling somewhat cleaner and that's kind of the reason that I built it like that I didn't want a shower that was going to take up a bunch of space in my van because I just felt like I wasn't going to use it that often and for something to take up that much space permanently in a van it would have to be something that I'm going to use almost every day and with how available Planet Fitness showers are. I just didn't really see that happening, so I decided to build this one, and even though it is a bit jimmy rigged, it does get the job done. So now that I'm finished in the shower, I don't like to just put it away right away because it's still a little bit wet along the insides of this liner and all on the floor, and I don't want to stuff it back in that drawer while it's super wet. I get like mildew or mold to build up in there, so typically what I'll do is I'll just turn the fan on and just let this sit here and dry out for like an hour or two. But while we wait for that to dry out, I'm gonna head over to the grocery store to pick up some ingredients and try to make a better burrito than the Taco Bell that I'm currently parked at can. And my goal isn't to just make a better burrito than Taco Bell, it's to make the best burrito. And I think in order to make the best burrito, we need to make burrito meat, 
which isn't the easiest thing to make because it takes three or four hours, but in my opinion, I think that'll make for the best burrito. But before we can do that, we have to go to the store and get a bunch of ingredients. So I'm gonna take out the e-bike right over to the grocery store, pick up everything I need, and then we're gonna get started cooking pretty early because it does take a while to cook this. All right, so I threw on a hoodie for myself because it is kind of cold out here, but the grocery store really isn't too far. It's just, I know I'm gonna have to get a lot of ingredients, so I want something to like kind of help me carry them and I don't feel like taking the van. Onward. So right up here to the right is that Taco Bell and I'll stop in there later and get a uh, burrito to compare, but this isn't a uh, regular Taco Bell. It's a Taco Bell Cantina. So they actually serve alcohol and it's right on the beach, which is super cool. But as I said, we'll check that out later. Cool to have one of those houses up on that cliff. There we go, groceries right at the end down there. So I've never made burrito meat or burrito tacos before, but I know that the process for cooking them is pretty involved. You gotta buy a bunch of different cuts of meat, brown them, get a bunch of different chilies and spices, and then braise them in a pot after you brown them for two to three hours, adding different spices along the way. And in the end of it, you get a meat that kind of just falls apart and it's supposed to be delicious. So this is gonna be my first attempt cooking it and hopefully I do it justice. So this isn't the largest grocery store, so I'm gonna have to substitute some stuff. And ideally I'd want some bone-in short ribs, but they only have boneless, so we're gonna use that. And then also ideally I would get chuck roast, but they don't have that, so I'm just gonna get some tri-tip. And for some reason they only have gigantic bags of dried chilies, so we're gonna have a lot of leftover. All right, so I think I have got everything we need, but I did have to make a few substitutes because this isn't the largest grocery store ever, but I think we should still be able to make a pretty good burrito. And I'm really glad that I brought the e-bike because these are pretty heavy. Beautiful out here. And I do have my shower up still, so I can't get in that side door. So we're gonna have to go in the front. I'm gonna get these groceries in there real quick and then come back out here and put this e-bike away. I definitely don't wanna leave this out. All right, so e-bike has been put away and I just checked the inside of this shower and it's dried out more than enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck this way again. So you guys can see kind of what I'm talking about with the drainage issues. So this like slotted drain gets clogged up with the uh, foam from my shower and doesn't drain perfectly. Like we had a little bit of leakage, but nothing too crazy. I think I might need to kind of just drill this out and make this like some sort of insert that I can remove when I take a shower and then pop back in when I'm not showering just so that it drains better. But I don't know if you guys have any suggestions for how I can get this to drain out of there a little bit better than it does. The floor is sloped down towards it. I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, but it is sloped all around. Um, but it's definitely not the perfect solution, but it works and it sits nice and tucked away. Now, I think we're ready to get started cooking and it is only 340, but this recipe really intimidates me and I've never made it before and I know it takes a while. So I wanna get started as early as possible. So to start out with this recipe, first thing I'm gonna do is prepare all the ingredients. And the first step is stemming and de-seeding all of these dried peppers. Mmm, these smell good. They almost smell like raisins. And I am going to head over to that Taco Bell a little bit later to uh, order a burrito for comparison to the one that I'm cooking. And I kind of modeled my burrito after a burrito that they have in their store, so it's a kind of 
fair comparison. But before I head over there and do that, I at least want to get this uh, meat stewing. All right, we've got our chilies all diced up, de-seeded, ready to go. Now I just gotta dice an onion, slice up some garlic, and cut up this meat, and I think we'll be good to start cooking. There we go, no crying. I guess I just needed a sharp knife. I'm just gonna kind of rough cut this into like semi-large chunks. That should be good. All right, everything that we need has been prepped. The meat, the peppers, the onions, the garlic, and I think that's everything we need to prep. So now I'm gonna take both of these and kind of sear them in groups. So I'm hoping that this pot is big enough to both sear this meat and braise it, but I'm not too sure. So first thing I gotta do is season this meat with some salt all over. And then heat up some oil and get all of these nice and browned on each side. All right, so I'm just gonna take each one of these cubes, throw them in here in batches, and brown them up on every side, and just kind of keep repeating that until I have all of the meat browned on all sides. All right. And that meat is beautifully cooked up, browned on all sides, and you're looking for this nice brown crust, not a gray meat. And mine isn't perfect, but it is good enough. So now we can take this burnt oil, get rid of that, get this back on some medium heat, add in some more fresh oil. All right, and now that that oil is hot, we can add in our onions. All right, so <laughs> I just had to run all the way back to the store on foot to grab some bone broth or beef broth because I realized that I only had one quart and I needed two. So put the onions on pause, we'll get those back up to heat and then we'll continue the recipe. All right, so we've got the onions back up and cooking. Now we can add a spoonful of tomato paste. And now that we've got that all nice and incorporated in there, we can add our garlic, cook that up until fragrant, and then throw in the rest of the stuff. And I might have to separate this into two pots because I don't think it's all gonna fit in here. Okay, so definitely not gonna have enough room in this one pot for another thing of beef stock. All this meat and everything else is gonna go in there. So I'm going to scoop some of these onions out into here, and we're gonna do about a fourth of it in this pot over here. So now we can take all of these dried chilies, split them up evenly between the two pots. So I'm just gonna do half and half now. Two of those. Now we can take our meat, split it up evenly between these two pots, since we're using two pots now. And then to our little stews that we have made. Gonna add some black pepper, some chopped bay leaf, and then just a little bit of onion powder. And then we can stir both of those up, make sure they're all nice and mixed together. And then we can turn the heat down to low on both of these and let them stew covered for an hour. And there we go. Now we just gotta wait, stir these occasionally for the next hour. And while I wait for those to cook, I'm gonna kind of organize and clean up this mess so that we can get ready for part two of this recipe. Look at that. That looks so good. So it's been about 30 minutes that these have been kind of stewing. So I'm gonna give them a good stir and then cover them up again. And then we've got another 30 minutes of cooking before we can move on to the next part. So I'm gonna get these covered up again and I will check in with you guys in 30 minutes. Okay, so it's been just about an hour, but it still has to cook for about another hour and a half to two hours. 
which kind of sucks because I'm starving. But now I can grab my handy dandy blender and then we can take all of our peppers that have been sitting in our broth cooking with the uh, beef, fish them out. Oh, it's so hot. Try not to burn ourselves while we fish out the rest of the peppers. God, it's so hot. Now we can scoop out some of the consomme from the beef. Pop that on top, and then blend that up until smooth. There we go. Ooh, that smells so good. But now that we've got that blended up, then we can add this back into the pot. About half in this one, about half in this back one. And I'm gonna save a little bit of it on the side for a chipotle sauce I'm gonna make to go in the burritos. Now we can get that all stirred in there and then cover these back up and let them cook for another hour and a half. So while those are cooking, I'm gonna get one step ahead so that we're ready to build this burrito when they're done and I'm gonna make the rice. So say what you want about minute rice, but I personally think it tastes just as good as regular rice and it's like 10 times easier to make. So. I'm just using minute rice and we're going to season it well and make it taste good and if any of you were to eat this, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between minute rice and regular rice. But then again, maybe you would. I don't know. I can't. And I have run out of lids, so we're just going to cover this with tin foil. So now that the rice is done, we can add two tablespoons of butter, some fresh chopped cilantro that I chopped off camera while I was uh, waiting for the meat to cook some fresh lime juice that is definitely not from a bottle. And then once that butter is all melted, which it looks like it just about is, this rice is good to go to be added to our burrito. And while we wait the last about hour and a half for this meat to finish, we're gonna go check out the competition. So yesterday when I came here, it was super cloudy and very cold. Today it's just pretty cold, but it's nice because the, uh, sun's out and that sunset is beautiful so you go taco bell cantina All right, so I got two of the beefy melt burritos and then a pina colada because the beefy melt burrito is the thing that I'm trying to kind of make, but they've also got this little deck out here just outside of the Taco Bell that has some of the nicest views that I've ever seen at a uh, Taco Bell in my life. It's pretty cool. But right now we're just waiting for our order. Um, shouldn't take too long though. No. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, so I got two of the beefy melt burritos, one for now to eat, just to see what we're kind of up against. So in this burrito, there's nacho cheese, chipotle sauce, rice, beef, and then these little Frito strips. And in our burrito, there's gonna be an upgraded version of pretty much every single one of those ingredients. So that right there is what we're up against. And it's definitely a stiff competition because this is one of my favorite things on the Taco Bell menu, so. I hope mine is just as good. I can say though that I've never felt more majestic eating a Taco Bell burrito in my life before though. <laughs> this is pretty cool. We've got about 50 minutes to kill until our beef is ready, so might just hang out on the beach until that's done. like they could fit in one pot so I took the other pot and just kind of mixed it into this one but it's been about an hour and 45 minutes almost two hours and this beef 
looks so good. It just falls apart. But the sun is just about fully set. I think it's set about 10 minutes ago, so sunset out there is really nice. But it was starting to get cold, so I had to put on a couple jackets and stuff to keep warm. But I'm gonna let this cook for another 10 minutes, and while we wait for that, I'm gonna make the nacho cheese sauce, which is the last thing that we have to make for this recipe. So for that sauce, we need two tablespoons of butter, and also I forgot, we still gotta make the chipotle sauce, but that's pretty easy to make. And then to the butter, we can add two and a half tablespoons of flour, and then one and a half cups of whole milk. And then while that's thickening, I'm gonna add in just a little bit of cayenne. And while we wait for that to thicken, I'm gonna shred up some cheese. I need about four and a half ounces, and I'm just gonna kinda of guesstimate that. And also, we're gonna add some uh, American cheese to that too, but I couldn't find any blocks, so I'm just gonna throw a bunch of these slices in there. And we can mix all that together until it melts into a beautiful nacho cheese sauce. And I think I might have made just a little bit too much cheese sauce. I don't know why I made so much. All right, so everything is ready. We have got our burrito meat, nacho cheese, rice. The actual last thing is the chipotle sauce. And for that, we're just gonna do mayonnaise, a bunch of it. And then a couple spoonfuls of our uh, blended up peppers from earlier. So we've got our chipotle sauce. So now I'm gonna get this all shredded up and then we're gonna build some burritos. And there we go. And this is the final product. And that looks so good. Tortilla, cilantro lime, rice. Beautiful burrito meat. Chipotle sauce, nacho sauce, some of that chopped cilantro, and the Taco Bell version has Fiesta strips, but I'm not going to use those, I'm just going to use some crushed up Doritos. And there we go, that is the burrito unrolled, now let's see how well I can roll this bad boy up because I don't have a good history with it. And there we go. <gasps> that is one beautiful burrito. Now, all you have to do is get one more pan dirty, crisp this baby up, and we'll be good to go. All right, so I got the burrito all nice and crisped up on all sides. I got the second burrito that I made in there. I got some consomme for dipping. Now, the only thing left to do is grab my second Taco Bell burrito. I also cleaned up the van while I was waiting for that to cook up. But I've got my Taco Bell burrito, and I've got my burrito. Let's see which one looks better. So I've got to say, on just appearance alone, my burrito takes the cake. Definitely a little bit bigger. I think Taco Bell's is wrapped better. Let's cut them in half and see whose looks better on the inside. There's Taco Bell. And there is Ryan Bell. <laughs> that looks so good. Give you guys one final look before I take a bite. You guys can be the judge. Now let's give them a taste test. So, Taco Bell burrito going first. Just as good as always, great comfort food. And now, the Beery Orion Burrito Deluxe. Cheers. Oh my God. I'm not gonna lie, I think that might actually be better. It's like just the perfect amount of spiciness. There's so much more flavor that you can pull out of it other than just Kind of with this one, it's just meat and cheese, and it looks spectacular. And I almost forgot we got some consomme to dip it in. Look at that. <laughs> I think this might be the best looking and the best tasting meal that I've ever made in the van. And you know what? I have got a ton of extra nacho cheese, so get some cheese on there, some consomme. 
so good. I do wish that uh, you guys were here to try this with me because I have a ton of rice, ton of meat, ton of cheese. I'm probably gonna have burrito a bunch of different ways for the next four or five days because I have so much of it left. I think that's gonna be just about it for this video. Probably just going to absolutely devour the rest of this burrito. I don't even know if I'm gonna eat that one after having that one. But um, I'm just gonna be camping here for the rest of the night, chowing down on some burritos. As always, I truly, truly appreciate you guys watching. It means the absolute world to me. If you like this video or maybe you've just been watching my channel for a while and haven't subscribed yet, please think about it. It really does help out. And I will catch you guys next time.